Hello there and welcome. I'm going to do a quick uh, video on 3-4 clutch pack failure where the failure itself is sourced within the valve body on a 4L60E. So what we have here in front of us is a valve body that I've gone back together with. Um, the backstory is that the customer had sent me his valve body to do vacuum testing because he had rebuilt his whole transmission uh, and you know, based on the procedures that he followed as he relayed them to me, did pretty much everything correctly. Uh, he pressure tested the forward drum, found it not to be leaking at the, you know, any of the feed ports where the shaft is pressed into the drum, that's where you test it. And he also um, replaced everything that he should have replaced, all his electrical components, harness, solenoids, uh, the whole nine, followed in play, in play procedures. He um, had the pump machined, installed a new pump kit, you know, did everything that, uh, you know, you're supposed to do with these transmissions, except for the fact that he did not have the capability to perform vacuum testing. He didn't have the equipment. So he had reached out to me, asked if I would vac test the valve body and the pump so that he can at least have some assurance that both of those parts are good to go and serviceable. And when I got the valve body on the bench and started testing it, I realized that I had absolutely no vacuum signal at the inboard position at the 2-3 shuttle valve. And so <clears throat> I grabbed another valve body just to see if there was, you know, something wrong, maybe something I was doing incorrectly with my testing. And, uh, you know, in fact, I grabbed two valve bodies and they both had decent signal. So what I'm going to show you is what actually happened and why I believe this caused the customer's 3-4 uh, uh, clutch to burn after a rebuild. So what he had done is he had installed this 2-3 shift valve into the valve body, um, said it was a Sonics valve, and he drilled the hole that you need to drill in these castings to facilitate the functionality that that shift valve gives you. So this is a, a 1 8 or 125 thousandths hole. It's drilled at this casting location right here. Get that to focus. And what you do is you're opening up an apply circuit feed in D3 to your overrun clutches when you put the shifter in drive three. And that will allow them to come on in first and second gear in addition to being on in third gear. Now factory 4L60E D3 apply strategy does not have your overruns come on until third gear unlike the 700R4. So that's why this is an advantageous upgrade for anyone with either a heavy duty towing, hauling, or a performance application in a 4L60E and it'll work in all years, all variants. But anyway, uh, let me show you the problem. So here's a factory 2-3 shift valve. All right. Noticed the overall diameter or outer diameter of each of the spools. Okay, they're all the same. This is the valve that he had installed, said it was from Sonics. You notice here, this outboardmost spool is not the same diameter as these others. Here's another 2-3 shift valve from Sonics that I just pulled out of a, a package you know, that I had in my inventory once I realized what was going on. And you notice that the spool here is the same diameter as the rest of them. So here are the diameters. So factory is going to be 435 thousandths. This Sonics valve, which I know is Sonics because I pulled it out of the packaging, is also the same, 435 thousandths. This spool, however, is not 435 thousandths. It is 394 thousandths. So what was happening here is this valve was causing a massive leak point between the 2-3 shift valve outboard and the inboard position here on this spool, the balance spool, and the 2-3 shuttle valve. So let me go ahead and install the correct valve and we'll do a quick vacuum test on the outboard position of the 2-3 shuttle valve because that was really our problem. I wasn't getting any vacuum signal whatsoever when I initially vac tested the customer's valve body. 
All right, and don't worry, I'm gonna move the camera so that you can actually see both the gauge and where I'm testing this. So let me actually do that now, and then we'll run the vacuum test. That should help. You should have visibility to both the test plate and the, uh, the gauge on the vac tester. All right, so all we're gonna do is test the 2-3 shuttle valve. So I'll make sure that's in. And you're gonna position it right here. This is where I was getting no vacuum signal whatsoever. So here we see 21 and a half inches. Okay, 20, maybe 21. There we go, 21 inches. Um, we'll call it 21 for sake of uh, being conservative. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the correct valve and stick the bad valve in there. Or what I believe to be I don't know if uh, I'll have to call Sonics. Admittedly, I haven't had time to do that, but I don't believe that's a Sonic valve. That might be some sort of aftermarket, but as far as I know, Sonics does not make two different versions of this valve, though I could be wrong. I don't believe they do. All right, now we'll go ahead and install the valve that originally came in with the customer's valve body. Stick that in there. And then we'll stick the 2-3 shuttle valve in, put back our test plate, and retest. All right, I'll show you where you, and how you can test this thing without the, the test plate if you don't have one. I ain't got nothing. Absolutely nothing. So you need some sort of vacuum signal here for your 2-3 shift and shuttle apply circuit to be functional. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna stick the uh, correct valve back in, and I'll show you where you need to test. If you just have the test machine, but you don't have the, you know, the big test plate. In theory, you're supposed to do all your vacuum testing dry. Uh, if you have some WD-40 in here, um, you may need to subtract maybe one inch of vacuum just to adjust for the fact that there's some WD in there, potentially creating, I don't know, artificial sealing, I guess, a little bit of a gain that you shouldn't have. Uh, Sonics instructs you to test all your castings, uh, valve bodies, pumps, whatever the, you know, whatever is uh, being tested dry, free of any transmission fluid or WD-40 or anything at all. So anyway, this is going to be the location right here where you're going to want to put your, uh, put your tester. All right, right there above my finger. Okay, make sure it's covering this entire circuit. Make sure your shuttle valve's all the way in. So we have 22. All right, 21 and a half. 21 and a half, 22, somewhere in there. So either way, 
it passes the test and that's all that matters. So I'm gonna have to chat with the customer and see exactly where this came from. I'm gonna also call Sonics and see if uh, you know they have some information on a different style valve. I mean, you notice the coloring is different from both the Sonics valve that I know that came out of Sonics packaging and the factory valve. So I'm not sure where this valve came from, but and I'm also not sure if this is by design to be smaller like this. I doubt it, but. I'm not sure. So let me go get some answers and then we'll come back. I'll fill you in on what Sonic said as, as well as uh, what my customer said, you know, in terms of where he got it. And, um, you know, we'll kind of summarize what we uh, saw here. All right, so I have some information for you to share. Uh, I talked to Sonics and uh, he confirmed that there is only one heavy duty 2-3 shift valve design in production. So not sure where that other one came from. He mentioned to me that he's never seen any other similar valves on the market, uh, but Sonics does not make a version of that valve with a smaller outboard spool like we saw with this other valve here. So um, spoke to the customer as well. He said he purchased uh, the valve off eBay. Uh, it was, I guess, advertised as a Sonics valve. I'm not sure, but uh, that's where he got it. Um, Unfortunately, eBay is becoming, or maybe has been for quite a while, uh, a source for counterfeit or illegitimate parts for uh, transmissions, engines, I mean, anything in the auto repair industry. A lot of counterfeit shit coming over from China. Unfortunately, you know, for whatever reason, we haven't done enough, in my opinion, to stem the flow of, uh, you know, all that crap coming over here from over there. So. Uh, my guess is that that valve is a Chinese valve and, you know, it was made uh, not the specification. So, anyway, that's the deal. Uh, always check that stuff. That's why vacuum testing is so, so critically important. Um, someone that's been building these for 15 years, even I didn't notice it right away uh, when I was, you know, um, taking his valve body apart and doing vacuum checks. I mean, you know, I didn't even realize that that spool was narrower until I went to actually vac test this replacement valve body just like you saw a few minutes ago and I was getting zero signal and I was like, oh, what the hell? I mean, I was getting perfect signal with the factory valve in there, uh, you know, the factory 2-3 shift valve. Why is this one giving me no signal? And that's when, it, you know, as I was looking at it, it dawned on me that that spool was noticeably smaller in diameter than the factory valve. So. Um, I keep Sonics valves in stock, you know, the HD23 shift valve, I'm always using them, so I always have one extra just in case, and uh, that's what went into this one here, so we're not, um, you know, facing any kind of delays while I went and, you know, grabbed a, a new valve. So anyway, um, that's the story, hope this was informative for you, and, uh, you know, just be on the lookout for these kinds of things, you know, you never know what you're going to find when you take a transmission apart, so. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it.